gonna continue with the energy balance uh, calculations that we were talking about last time so we discussed the energy balance for non reactive system and today we're gonna start with the reactive systems and um, today we're just discussing how we do the calculations and the steps and all this stuff and then the next time we will show how to do these uh, calculations in Excel so um, um, let's uh, see uh, what we're gonna talk about today so we, we're gonna show what is the energy balance equation and uh, the term that's uh, new to this equation now which is the heat of reaction and how we do the calculations um, to get this heat of, heat of reaction um, to do the energy balance calculations uh, for the reactive systems so <clears throat> again the uh, energy balance equation is going to be the same and this is actually the equation that we were discussing last time just to ref for refreshment and to uh, revise this equation so we have the enthalpy uh, of the product or the outlet minus the enthalpy of the inlet is the heat input to the system and uh, actually the units were joule per second and um, the only difference that we're gonna see when we uh, move to the reactive system is that there is a term called the heat of reaction it has the same units but it's it's joule per mole it's not joule per second um, and it just tells us how much energy the reaction gives to the system or absorbs from the system either it's endothermic or exothermic and you'll see the difference uh, shortly so the energy balance for reactive system it's the same equation just the only difference is that this term which is the uh, rate of reaction multiplied by the heat of reaction and actually this rate is the same uh, rate of reaction that we talked about in the material balance calculations a um, few uh, videos ago so Q is the same Q and this is the rate of reaction it's mole per second uh, and the H is joule per mole so if you multiply these two it's gonna be joule per second so the equation will be uh, homogeneous from the uh, units uh, point of view um, and um, here comes the uh, important thing what is the heat of reaction and how we do the calculation so actually the heat of reaction is just uh, indication uh, to how much heat the reaction needs to uh, go on so it, it, it sometimes it, it requires some heat to go uh, forward so it's an endothermic reaction and sometimes it uh, releases heat so it's an endothermic reaction and the heat of reaction depends on the components and the stoichiometry of the reaction and the temperature at which the reaction happens and um, uh, the way you get the heat of reaction uh, there are two ways actually the easiest way which is just to look up the uh, reaction that you're interested in in the literature and see if somebody did the calculations or calculated the heat of reaction somehow or measured it by, by any means um, and just to take this value put this in your equation and then you're good to go and you don't need to do any more uh, calculations um, the long path is to do the calculations manually which is gonna be uh, not difficult but just requires uh, long calculations and you'll see this right now so the manual calculations uh, include two steps actually um, the first one is to do the uh, calculation of the heat of reaction at standard temperature and um, the reason we do this is uh, gonna be uh, shown in few slides but this is the first step to do the reaction uh, heat of reaction calculations at the standard temperature which is the 25 degrees or 298 Kelvin um, uh, as, as we all know and the second step is to do the calculation of the heat of reaction based on the value you calculated uh, at the ambient temperature or the standard temperature uh, and use this value to calculate the reaction at uh, the heat of reaction at the re desired temperature where, where you do the reaction actually um, so um, why we do this at standard temperature because the heat of reaction is calculated actually from uh, heat of formation um, and this this is the the how we do the reaction it's uh, um, the summation of the stoichiometric coefficient it's the same stoichiometric coefficient we talked about in the uh, material balance calculations before uh, it's positive for products and negative for reactants and then the uh, standard heat of formation uh, it's uh, a physical uh, property of each material has its uh, own uh, heat of formation and um, the reason we do this at standard temperature is because we cannot get any value for heat of formation unless uh, uh, only uh, at the um, the standard temperature this is the only way you can do the heat of uh, formation or, or you kind of a value find a value of heat of formation is just at standard temperature um, and uh, that's why we we only can calculate the heat of reaction manually at standard temperature um, so how can we get this heat of formation 
um, oh just a second so sometimes this equation can be written this way or it's uh, sorry or it's written as um, summation of heat of formation of products minus the summation of heat of formation of reactants so either way it's gonna be the same the sigma is gonna uh, do that uh, uh, plus and minus thing uh, automatically so where can we get this zero formation actually you get it uh, sorry from uh, Colson uh, the appendix 6 in Colson, that, uh, I mean appendix D, um, the one we use to get the CP values or constants for vapor. And actually, if you go a little bit down, you will, or yeah, this is actually before the CP, you can find this del HF, which is the delta heat of formation, um, and it's called the standard enthalpy of formation, uh, and its units is kilojoule per mole. And actually, it's important to keep your eyes on the um, on the units because the units of the delta heat uh, delta or, or the heat of formation is different from the units of the CP in the same reference actually it's here kilojoule per mole and here it's joule per mole Kelvin so if you're gonna use both in, in one equation then you need to multiply this by thousand just to be uh, homogeneous uh, units uh, in, the, in the same equation so let's see the uh, the heat of formation actually um, if you go to the table below then you will find that uh, it's not there in the first page actually it's on the second page so let's say you you want to see um, uh, any component like component number eight which is silicon tetrachloride whatever the component then you go to the second page and then you see number eight and then um, you'll not find any value for for some components actually there are no heat formation because these components are just there in nature uh, man didn't do anything to produce these components that are like the elements most of, all, all of the elements will not have any heat of formation that's why you'll find in this um, first couple of pages you'll not find uh, some values some values are missing here because they're just elements so you don't need to um, do anything to get these components uh, other than this you'll find the values and some are positive and some are negative it doesn't matter just get the value and put it in your equation um, to calculate the heat of formation so uh, yeah you'll find here still some gaps um, it's it's totally fine if you have uh, an element just put zero so uh, you're good to go um, <clears throat> So here is the, um, yeah, back to the equation. So this is the way we do the calculations. And uh, now, um, uh, let's see, we have this reaction, it's oxidation of uh, pentane. Uh, and um, uh, it produces carbon dioxide and water vapor. And this is the uh, way we do the calculation of the heat of reaction. So we have five uh, carbon dioxides and eight H2O. So that's why we, get, we do positive plus uh, five and plus eight. Each one is multiplied by the heat of formation of carbon dioxide and water vapor. And then you have minus one and minus eight, which is the reactants. And just calculate the heat of reaction at 25 degrees. Um, it's important to keep this in your mind. So the last part and the longest part of the calculation is how to do the calculations at the desired temperature or any other temperature. So let's just see uh, what we have and then um, uh, know why we do this uh, calculation this way. So actually this is the reaction that we have at required temperature and we don't know the heat of reaction but we know the heat of reaction at standard temperature. This is a known value and we cannot uh, we cannot do uh, calculation of heat of reaction directly from here so the only way we can do it is um, going through a long path but this is the only solution we have which is going that way so you calculate the um, uh, heat that is required to cool or change the temperature of the reactants from this uh, required temperature to the standard temperature so if it's this is like high temperature like uh, maybe 100 Celsius to 100 Celsius any value then you are cooling the pro the, the, the reactants from this high temperature to the uh, 298 so you're uh, moving these to the uh, reactant uh, temperature uh, or the the uh, standard temperature and then um, you add this value of the heat of reaction that you just calculated and then uh, calculate the heat that you are required you, you need to heat the products from this uh, standard temperature to the reaction temperature um, so it will be three steps calculations you do this uh, step it's like CPDT it's almost like calculating the enthalpy but it's the opposite uh, in enthalpy you use from 298 to the T uh, the desired temperature and then you add this heat of reaction the standard heat of reaction and then you 
um, add this term of the products from 298 to the reaction temperature so it's uh, it's not it's not difficult it's really straightforward but it uh, includes a bunch of steps and calculations and this is uh, what we're gonna show in the next video when we do the calculations in Excel and we'll we'll, we'll try to make these uh, calculations as simple as possible just to um, make it easier for us to do the calculations manually without uh, bothering with uh, these calculations. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.